Influenza, commonly known as the flu, is a contagious respiratory illness that affects the nose, throat, and sometimes the lungs. It ranges in severity from mild to severe and can be fatal in extreme cases. The most effective way to combat the flu is by getting vaccinated each year. The name influenza originated in 15th century Italy from an epidemic attributed to influence of the stars, hence influenza. Influenza is a single-stranded, helically-shaped RNA virus of the orthomyxovirus family. Influenza virus are categorized into four types, A, B, C, and D. Types A and B lead to the seasonal flu epidemics we see each winter, while type A virus can also cause pandemics, global outbreaks of the disease. Unlike A and B, type C results in mild illness and doesn't spark epidemics. Type D affects cattle and is not a concern for human health. The A viruses are further divided based on two proteins on their surface, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. The flu virus is notorious for its ability to change, undergoing alterations in two main ways, antigenic drift and antigenic shift. Let's now focus on these two and how they differ. Firstly, antigenic drift refers to minor gradual changes in the virus that can lead to a new virus strain. These changes affect the virus's surface proteins, the hemagglutinin and the neuraminidase, which are recognized by our immune system normally. Over time, however, these mutations can accumulate, potentially leading to a virus that is significantly different from earlier strains and may evade our immune defense. Now, antigenic shift, on the other hand, is a sudden, major change that can produce a new influenza A subtype. This can occur when a flu virus from animals gain the ability to infect humans. Such shifts can lead to pandemics, and they might introduce a virus against which the human population has little to no immunity for. Although flu viruses are always evolving, pandemic-causing shifts are rare, with only four occurring in the last century. Now let's talk about the transmission and the pathophysiology of influenza. First and foremost is the flu is very contagious. The flu is primarily spread through tiny droplets released when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks. Those particularly at risk include individuals over 65 years old, those with chronic diseases, young children, and pregnant women. Following respiratory transmission, the virus attaches to and penetrates respiratory epithelial cells in the trachea and in the bronchi. Viral replication occurs where they multiply, which results in the destruction of the host cell. Regeneration of the epithelium then later takes about three to four weeks. The replication, inflammation of the upper airways causes the flu symptoms, which begin suddenly and may involve fevers, cough, sore throat, runny or stuffy nose, body aches, headaches and fatigue. Some, particularly children, may experience vomiting and diarrhea. To diagnose the flu, it really involves a swab of the upper respiratory tract which then can be used in several ways. Firstly, rapid diagnostic tests can detect parts of the virus, whereas there is other more accurate methods such as reverse transcriptase PCR, viral culture, and immunofluorescent assays. If you contract the flu, Antiviral drugs may be recommended, and treatment should begin within the first two days of symptom onset. These antiviral drugs are most effective when started early, but can still be beneficial later, especially for those at high risk of complications. Complications of influenza include having a secondary bacterial pneumonia, exacerbation of underlying respiratory conditions, otitis media, laryngotracheobronchitis, and bronchitis. Most deaths from influenza 
occur in people above the age of 65. And so prevention is key. The annual flu vaccine is the cornerstone of flu prevention. By staying informed about the flu symptoms, how it spreads, and available treatments, people can take proactive steps to protect themselves and their loved ones from this potentially serious illness. Thank you for watching.